With CES all done, I'm gonna take a much needed break from tech news. Maybe I'll check on sports. Oh, that team's doing well. Are you excited? Sports Maybe they'll make it to finals. Mozilla is the latest victim, or perpetrator, depending on how you see things, in the culture war between crypto bros and crypto nos. The nonprofit Mozilla Foundation has accepted donations in Bitcoin since 2014, but will now be pausing that program after user backlash spurred by a co-founder of Mozilla, Jamie Zawinski, and Peter Lintz, the designer of Firefox, Firefox's Gecko engine. Those two apparently weren't aware of the policy and attacked a tweet posted by Mozilla on New Year's Eve, reminding people they can donate in cryptocurrency through BitPay. And I guess I'm confused because I thought everyone was just on the same page about NFTs being like sort of an interesting idea in theory, but pretty cringe in practice, although James obviously disagrees. You're crypto bro. Honestly. Or you crypto. Oh? Yeah, that's uh, that's where it applies. Yes! But crypto, I thought this whole time the cryptocurrencies were still kind of okay. So where are we at? Let me know. I need to know or I can't write the jokes. I'm simply an empty vessel of the cultural consciousness. Who are you? Sonos sued Google for patent infringement in 2020 regarding various technologies related to wirelessly connected speakers and surprise, they actually won, which I didn't know was possible. Wouldn't Google have blackmailed them with their own data or something? Isn't this what we're freaking out about? If I sued you, would you blackmail me? Anyways, Google has already rolled out a change to its line of Nest slash home speakers that will bring them in compliance with the trial ruling and which will also make life much worse for owners of said speakers. Yay, that's me. Listen, really? At Google Home? Do you have them in groups? Not really. Oh, watch, okay, you might be all right. But some users will have to download a separate device utility app to set up devices and install updates and will no longer be able to adjust volume for a group of speakers all at once. Oh my God. So if you've got a stereo set up or a few units in a living room group, you'll have to individually set the volume for each of them. Google says it doesn't expect the ruling to impact its ability to import or sell these products. And yeah, that's incorrect. <laughs> it's impacting me right now. I'm not going to do it. And I'd like to take a moment to address a frustrating viral story that has taken off this week, despite my attempts to ignore it. See, last year- Now they got herpes. <laughs> uh oh. Last year, Norton announced it was including an optional crypto mining feature in their suite of antivirus apps, if you could call them that. And we called it out as kind of dumb at the time. But on Tuesday, Cory Doctorow, an activist author and surprisingly not a Spider-Man villain, tweeted that Norton is sneakily quote, installing crypto mining software on computers and skimming a commission, which it does do if you opt in, which led everyone on Twitter to think that Norton was surreptitiously stealing their users' PC performance and profiting from it. But to be clear, Norton antivirus may be largely unnecessary and extremely annoying to uninstall, but while the crypto mining app is automatically installed, it doesn't appear to be doing anything unless you tell it to. It's not sneakily. It's really the one word. There's even a way, an annoying way, but a way to uninstall it. Now this probably bothers me more than it does other people because of my now encyclopedic and unwanted knowledge of obscure tech stories, but there it is. <laughs> Norton. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you one last time this CES week by Seasonic, the benevolent god of supplying power to PCs. I mean, look at the Prime TX 1000 watt power supply. It has been blessed with an 80 plus titanium efficiency rating. Just look at it. A fully modular design for clean cable setups. Testify. Fluid dynamic fan bearings with hybrid fan control. Great. And a truly exalted 12 year warranty. <laughs> On high, baby. <laughs> Miraculous! Seasonic doesn't want you to pledge your life to them or anything. They just want you to check them out at seasonic.com or at the links below. Put a Seasonic in your system. You're too blessed to be stressed. You can't leave any quick bits on your plate. They're good for you. They've got nutrients. Slurp them up. After confirming their next series of desktop processors would use a new, not backwards compatible socket, AMD has said they're looking at enabling support for current gen Ryzen 5000 processors in old 300 series motherboards. Some manufacturers enabled Ryzen 5000 support in some lower end A320 boards, but it'll be up to AMD to allow the same thing to happen on mid-tier B350 and higher end X370 boards, which would be nice as long as users are ready to ride those parts into the ground since there will be no upgrade path, sadly. The captain should go down with their ship. That's just the way, it doesn't need to make sense. And the band. 
Samsung may be looking to extend its lead in the foldable display space if some of their wacky prototypes from CES are any indication. Thanks to Abjit Mishra, we got a look at a slider concept, an all-screen laptop, a number of prototypes with tri-folding designs, and a speaker with a wraparound display that can fold out into a flat one. That, that one's kind of dumb. That's, I gotta be honest, because someone's gotta be honest at CES. Half the things are just made in Blender. They're not real, like this. <laughs> Look at that. Speaking of phones, a bunch of smartphone announcements flew under the radar this week because no one cares, but they're still kind of interesting because they're all running Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset. There's the Xiaomi Mi 12 Pro, the Realme GT2 Pro, the Motorola Edge X30, the Oppo Find X4, the OnePlus 10 Pro, and the iQ9 series. Yeah, I don't care, I was right the first time. E3 will once again continue playing dead this year with the event's showrunners, the Entertainment Software Association, confirming it will exist as a virtual event come June because of Omicron. Some industry reporters are calling the ESA out though, since before COVID hit, E3 was already barely clinging to life, and it's not clear why they're pretending that's not the case now. We were totally gonna have an event, guys. We're to, hey, we're, we were. It's just because of COVID. We swear. It's got some real, I'm not dead yet. And in perhaps the realest example of air tag abuse yet, fashion model Brooks Nader said thanks to an alert from her iPhone, she found an air tag in her coat that had apparently been placed there to stalk her. I heard she's running as an independent. <laughs> Nader. It's actually happening. Uh, it's it, the tracker apocalypse. So I guess all of us Android folks should install Apple's Tracker Detect app to stop this from happening to us. Wait a second. Is this Apple's way of getting an app on all of our phones? And you could use some more tech news, but not until Monday. Come back then to get a refill, but it's the weekend and CES is over. Hey, I'll see you at the after party at Mandalay Bay. You the, gonna be there? The weekend? After party? Not. Is that a, about the artist? Or Maybe. Making a pun? Bye-bye. <laughs>